It's a fundraiser video today with Bjork and Rosalia, two great singers that have come together to combine their talents. And it was Rosalia who was invited. But we have a bit of bio about the song and it's important because it is a fundraiser. And it, what it says on the official video is this. Bjork and Rosalia are donating all the rights to the income generated by the song to the Ajis non-profit organization and that is AEGIS to combat open pen fish farming in Iceland. The record companies have agreed to do the same and all the funds raised support legal fees for protesters taking action to stop the development of intensive farming that harm wildlife, deform fish and pose risks to the salmon's DNA and survival. Immediate action is crucial. Well, if I can play a part on my channel, it's an absolute honor to feature this song today. What does it say about the song? Such as Bjork and Rosalia, they let us know in social net networks. We can now hear after several postponements, their long awaited collaboration, Oral, starting this or oral, starting this November the 21st, as the Islytic Icelandic production company announced it is a song accompanied by an original music video created by A1 aimed at raising funds for the fight against mass fishing in Iceland. In fact we can hear both artists singing it is the right thing to do in some social media clip. But no this mysterious topic has nothing to do with fish or sea creatures. Here we will tell you the true meaning of the song with the most intriguing title which actually has to do with what you are probably thinking. How the collaboration with Rosalia came about was this. I'm offering a song of Rosalia and I singing together and the profits will go to support that fight against the fish farms in Iceland is how Bjork introduced the song through her social media networks last October when it was supposed to be released. The, now the people have risen up and protested against the installation of fish farming here. We want to donate the sales of this item and help with legal fines. We hope it can be an example, she added. But how did both stars end up collaborating and why specifically on this song? In reality, the Icelandic, today my S's, Icelandic singer wrote it more than 20 years ago, everybody, between two of her iconic albums, Homogenic 1997 and Vespertine in 2001. However, she seemed so pop to him that she did, it didn't fit into any of them. Even if she managed to get it out of her, she couldn't forget about it and remembered it recently when the idea of re-recording it came to mind. I thought, wow, the beat was very primitive, but I guess it was slightly inspired by a Jamaican dancehall, she revealed. So that is what it's about. Also, the meaning of the song. The meaning, it does have meaning, by Bjork and Rosalia, explores the themes of desire, temptation, and the blurred boundaries between dreams and reality. Now, we'll hear the opening verse here, where it says, Your mouth floats above my bed at night, my own private moon that suggests a dreamlike state where Bjork is visited by somebody symbolized by their mouth, representing intimacy and connection. So there's a, the song does have meaning, but the profits from this song is going, I don't want to confuse people, is going towards that particular organization that are fighting fish, fish farming, that are destroying the salmon fishing in Iceland. So it's a great cause, but as I said, the song itself is separate because it does have a true meaning and will go through the lyrics of desire, temptation, and the blurred boundaries between dreams and reality. I've often said in my channel, I would love to do something worthwhile at Christmas. And then I came across this song and somebody said to me, have you heard the latest? And I did. So it's not as though it's brand new, but when I looked at the lyrics, and I'm bringing them up. I'm actually blown away. 
I'm blown away with another great, great song by two great, great artists. So let's enjoy. I hope you, you donate towards the cause. All will be in the description below. And let's savor a song that has actually a Christmassy feel about it as well. I wanted to do more alternative songs this year for Christmas. I'm not a person who celebrates it in the traditional way with Santa Claus because here I have a Nordic. Um, it would be the equivalent to Santa and my sister gave it to me. She says, you don't like Santa Claus, you've grown out of it. But there's a little Nordic man that's guiding me on what I would call my third single that I've introduced to my channel with two great artists that has a great meaning, Christmassy feel, and is raising money for a wonderful cause. And at Christmas time, it's nice to donate. So all three combined, I'm delighted to introduce Rosalia, Bjork, and Oral, or pronounced, uh, pronounced uh, Oral. Floats above my bed at night My own a private moon Just because the mind can make up Whatever it wants does it about isn't it 
three-dimensional. You've got two women fighting over who? And there's a line, I can't cross it. What line? We'll discuss that in a minute. And again, the art is brought to life with Rosalia and Bjork. Congratulations on a stunning video. Even though you didn't bring it out in 1997, Bjork, and it's 20 years old, this song, I still feel it's very relevant to now. The intro is Bjork and Rosalia. Your mouth floats above my bed at night, my own private moon. And then it goes into just because the mind can make up whatever it wants, does it mean it will ever come true? Won't ever happen just because, in brackets, she can? She can. Please, could I change that? So it is a, a battle of two women for the same person. Let's develop because the meaning is, as I said, themes of that desire and temptation and the blurred boundaries between dreams and reality that you've just seen. So it's almost like the whiteness of the video is reflecting that dreamlike state. With the opening lines, your mouth floats above my bed at night, my own private moon. I feel it suggests a dream, that dreamlike state that we've talked about where I feel Bjork is visited by somebody who's Bjork today my s's <laughs> I had dental work recently so that's what's going on everybody so a dreamlike state where the narrator is visited by somebody who somebody who symbolizes by their mouth and I'm going to be um, criticized by my mouth if I don't get this right so it does represent that intimate intimacy and connection and then the verse that says just because the mind can make up whatever it wants does it mean it'll ever come true won't ever happen just because she can please could I change that and continues is that the right thing to do Oh, I just don't know. I just don't know. Is that the right thing to do? Oh, I just don't know. I don't know. Is what it says. But here I feel the verse examines the power of the mind to shape your desire and emphasize the potential for those desires to manifest in reality. The line, just because the mind can make up whatever it wants, doesn't mean it'll ever come true. That to me suggests the thoughts and fantasies we have, everyone. Yeah, we all have thoughts. We all have fantasies about somebody, the mouth, the eyes. You know, we ooze and we think. Because I love my partner's eyes. I think he has the most warm, inviting eyes. Plus, at the same time, if he hurts, it shows in his eyes. If he's happy, it shows in his eyes. His eyes talk a thousand languages. But for me here, it also suggests this particular song and verse that the thoughts and fantasies that we have can have a profound effect on our lives. It's true. How many times have we fantasized about somebody? It doesn't matter if it's a celebrity or somebody close or a cousin or a friend's brother or sister or whatever. And the reality is they're never going to be in your life and it's never going to happen. But it doesn't stop us fantasizing and I often think I relate it in parallel to dreams some dreams come true other dreams do not but it still has that profoundness on us doesn't it that impact of oh, wow I really like them and you fantasize and you create this image of them almost like an a1 character in your head however it also raises questions about the consequences and ethics of pursuing those desires because usually the answer is no. Usually, why do you like me? I'm dating somebody or I'm sorry, I'm not looking at a relationship. It usually comes 99% with disappointment. So if you are one of those people who fantasize and then act out in reality following through, you can be hugely, hugely disappointed. It's better to keep it as a secret fantasy for yourself, something that will bring a smile. I mean, I fantasize. I might be in a relationship about other people and it brings a smile to my face. I know it'll never be real, but it's nice to know you think, if only, if I wish, that kind of thing. Now, when it goes into the chorus, it says, is that the right thing to do? Oh, I just don't know, I just don't know. Is that the right thing to do? It's a repeated question you, you should and ought to answer yourself or ask yourself. 
oh, I just don't know, I just don't know. And then that is about the uncertainty and internal conflict. Because when you say, I don't know, I don't know, you're unsure, aren't you? You don't know. And it's a conflict with yourself. It reflects hesitation, moral dilemma, should I, shouldn't I? Would it be right? Would it not be right? That's the brother of, that's the sister of, that's somebody that's that's out of my league, but I'm going to try. And you, and in the end, I honestly feel when people follow their desires and fantasies and put it into reality, I always say to them, you're faced with huge disappointment. It's not something you should be doing. It ought to be private. There's hesitation and morale there and a dilemma about that decision. And there ought to be. There ought to be thinking time. Because it suggests that the question of morality, of giving in to their desires, is as reflective as what happens in reality with many people. So it's about balance, everyone. It really is. Now, when we go into the second verse, it says, Let me introduce one to the other, the dream and the real. Get them acquainted. Just because she can introduce, just because she can, a mouth to a mouth. And then the, you know, verse 2 follows on to the chorus, asking the same question. Is that the right thing to do? Or I just don't know, I just don't know. Is that the right thing to do? I just don't know. I just don't know. And when it, when it comes to that second verse, that is about the juxtaposition of dreams and reality. The line, let me introduce you to one another, the dream and the real, that emphasizes everyone. Just that simple bridge the gap between two separate realms that I feel ought not to come together. I've already mentioned three times it fantasies and desires should be kept private and express your longing for the experiences there as well. It's a dangerous composition and yo quiero besala is Spanish for I want to kiss him as well. So now the juxtaposition is fact and reality of coming together to turn a fantasy into something that I think I think really again should be private but some people just go ahead and say I want to kiss him I want to, I'm gonna hellbent get this person into my life and usually they don't that's the reality it just reflects on the physical contact and connection of the battle that's going on now when it comes to the outro it said, just because you can, there is a line, I can't cross it. It's almost like reality creeps in at the end because that frustration of, you know, it, you know that little doubt you get? I don't know if it can. They're just, and then it repeats, just because you can, there's a line there, I can't cross it. And I can't cross it, and I can't cross it. It's almost like a chanter has come into it. Realization has come into the situation. And out of, born out of all of the feelings of, desire and the fantasy and reliving and not reliving well probably reliving it time time again in your head believing it, 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 it can be real we have just because you can there's a line in it I can't cross it coming into the equation reinforcing the idea that despite your desires and fantasies there are those boundaries you need to recognize everyone that cannot and should not as I've been saying be crossed. It's a hint at eternal struggle, this song, to reconcile desires with morality based on personal boundaries. Now overall, I'm going to give you a summary. It explores conflicting emotions, morale dilemmas, and the power of thoughts and fantasies to shape reality. And like always, I always studied the lyrics before I talked to you. And now that I've seen the video, now that I've gone through the lyrics, I'm glad I made this assumption because those boundaries that must be respected in, in pursuing these ideas ought to be your decision about accepting a fantasy as a fantasy, a reality will never be that fantasy. Thanks for listening.